I wanted to do some videos that were doing um, up close looks at a lot of the um, dimensions range from Tonic which are um, obviously dies to create dimensional projects so often gift boxes and things like that um, I thought I'd start with the terrarium gift box they have actually just made my first few of them as you can see off to the side um, and the idea behind these videos is I'm going to um, do an up close look and show you all the dies that come in the set and then at the end of the video I'm going to um, and I'm going to show you examples too but at the end of the video I'm going to show you um, the basic construction of the box as well and I'm also going to use that same footage and create another video um, in my construction series which is just putting together the box so you can either come back and have all of the waffling beforehand or if you've forgotten how to make it you can just go back to the construction video if you'd rather so um, this is the stunning terrarium box this came out um, in the 17th birthday celebrations um, for Tonic's 17th birthday on Hochanda um, and it's a gorgeous um, hexagonal box it's really cleverly designed um, and it's really fun to put together as well so um, I'll go through the die set first this is how I store my uh, large Tonic die sets I got these um, I think they're called A4 zipper pouches from Wilco and they're like 40p each so I thought that's a pretty decent price to store your dies in and um, I trimmed, no I didn't trim, I didn't trim this packaging down, sometimes I trim the packaging down just so it fits in easier um, and then I take an A4 piece of grey board and an A4 magnetic sheet and I did trim the height of these a tiny bit just so I don't end up popping off that little zipper on the side when I take it in and out and then I put that inside I am going to eventually um, stick the whoops, stick the grey board to the magnet so that it does keep it um, rigid so none of the dies fall off when I'm taking it in and out um, but they're just separate at the moment but they will be stuck eventually so this is our enormous terrarium die set oh on the back of the package too it gives you um, some little bits of inspiration um, showing you the open box down there and um, how you can put together the different panels for the sides of them as well so um, I try to always keep the packaging if I can especially for the big die sets because um, you can you know you've got the information you've got the product number so if you can't get them all back on your magnetic sheet you can put that product number in on the tonic website and they usually have um, an image of all the dies laid out so you can work out how to get them back on your sheet as well which is always helpful so this is the enormous die set that we get we get this big um, hexagonal piece this is the base of the box so for each box you will need to cut one of these then you get uh, this piece with three long uh, triangles on um, and this creates the top of your box, so you'll need two of these because it's hexagonal box and this cuts three, so you need six sides. Um, and then you get this piece, which um, <clears throat> attaches to the base of the box to create a, a place for the um, hexagonal cone to sit on top of the box. So you need three of these when you're cutting them out. And um, I'm pretty sure you can get all the pieces you need out of two sheets of A4. So they're they're quite an economical box to make and they're really they do feel really nice and sturdy as well when you've made them too. Then we have all these extra dies. So we've got three different kinds of outside um cutting edge to decorate the cone part. Um you can I think you can see, yeah, these so these two here they look like they're the same size but when you look at them closely this one's cutting edge is on the outside of the metal and that one's on the inside so you could actually like say cut this out of gold mirror cut that out of your like red card or something and you'd have a tiny skinny gold mat around your red mat and then you get this one which has got dots in so you could cut this one first and then place this one over the top and you'll get the dots around the edge of it or you could um, say you wanted a few acetate panels in your lid you cut this one out to create your aperture and then you could cut this one to give you the perforation around the aperture as well so um, it's, it's actually really nice and versatile then 
uh, pattern wise you've got this gorgeous um, flowery one I haven't actually cut this one out yet but it is gorgeous um, does it show up on the packaging it doesn't actually show that one on the packaging well it shows it here on it shows it on there so that's what that one looks like that is really nice actually it looks like it's got a kind of opening bluebell on it like there that's really good um, and then you get this one which I have used on one of my samples and this one um, I love that geometric anyway I think I'm probably going to do some paper piecing with that because you can multiply that out and create a whole background with it too you don't have to just use it to decorate the boxes and then this one is more of a Christmassy one uh, because you've got some holly leaves in there then oh and you've also got this one which um, is another sort of flourishy um, design that cuts off at an angle which is really nice um, if I show you back the packaging again so if you cut cut it with a triangle you get this empty space here which you can then um, stick your flowers to or little holly leaves or you could even stamp a sentiment on it there's loads of different things that you can do with that little area and it's just it's just a cool design feature as well actually then um, you get the panels to decorate the rest of the areas so you've got four options for decorating the main hexagonal box piece this piece you can tell that those are the ones that go with it because they were sitting inside it again on these two shapes you've got one's the cutting edge on the outside and one's the cutting edge on the inside and you've got the dotty one too so you can do exactly the same as you did for the triangles to make them match and you also have this one with a tiny um, scallop around the edge as well and again you've got designs that match so this one's got a flower in this one's got the same geometric pattern um, this one is the same kind of holly sort of pattern oh no that's the holly one that's the holly pattern that's the sort of more flourishy one that would go with the uh, one that's got a sloping bottom and then in that uh, section you also get two little tags this one says take a peek and this one says winter wishes um, which are great little ones just to um, dangle from the box or use anywhere really I really want to do um, a Halloween project that says take a peek and then like if you dare but I haven't had enough time to do it I'm hoping I'll get a chance to do it before Halloween but anyway um, then you get three different ways to decorate the um, the top section so this is this part if you're making the um, normal box this does get hidden by the cone so you only see this part when you take the top of the box off so you can decide to decorate it or not depending on what look you're going for um, again oh no that's different isn't it do they yeah they do mat inside each other so you have the ability um, to do the larger one a slightly smaller one and an even smaller one on this one and then you get um, this sort of damasky design and two of the the kind of holly designs as well um, you also get two holly leaves you get a lovely little um, more modern leaf with um, an outside cutting edge and you get another modern leaf over here with the outside cutting edge so um, you can do two different colours of cardstock or you can do a colour of card and on vellum or something or if you were more into your stamping you could cut the leaf out of funky foam and stamp it onto the solid shape if you'd rather um, you get a spiral flower as well and then you get this large flower too um, which cuts the intricate detail but also has the outside edge so if you just wanted a sort of random because it's not quite not quite equal but a random scalloped circle that's quite a nice one to have as well oh no I'm not going to be able to get it back in the right place uh oh there we go um, yeah so there are all the dies that you get in the set um, I just thought it's nice to show you properly in detail the kind of dies you get this is the thing I like to see when I'm thinking about um, getting a die set or even if I've already got it and it's just upstairs but I'm thinking about an idea and I just want to watch a, a quick video to remind myself of what's in the die set while I'm thinking up ideas um, I just thought it's a nice way, a nice thing to do um, 
Also, don't think you just have to use these to decorate the box. I know that's kind of an obvious thing to say, but sometimes people forget that. But these triangles, a DL card, perfect Christmas tree, and you could even um, you could either cut that separately, colour it with your alcohol markers, or um, maybe you've got a background stamp that you want to use on it, or you can just use the intricate panels, especially the holly, making that into a Christmas tree would look really nice. Um, you could do a geometric Christmas tree with the geometric pattern as well. Um, this one you could just use into your card to create um, just cool lines across your card. Because if you cut it, well, it's not really a cutting die, it's more of a debossing die. But if you did it like that and then you flipped it and did it like that and then you did it like that again, um, you know, you'd get the diagonal lines all down your card which would look nice in the little dotty pattern. Um, again, leaves and flowers you can use anywhere, and the little tags you can use anywhere because you don't have to make them a tag. This one's really easy to just snip that little hole off. Um, yeah, so there's loads of different ways you can use this. You just gotta, I mean, um, if this is one of the only dimensional die sets you've got from Tonic, then it's a all of their die sets are really versatile. So you can make the actual thing they're supposed to make, but then um, if you just keep uh, thinking about it and and mulling ideas over in your mind there are loads of other ways that you can use them um, and create like tons of cards from them as well as the 3d projects right so that's all of the dies I'm going to put these away now so none of them fall off and get lost But, so, you know you get all of those decorative panels, but you don't have to use them at all either. You could just use, I've done this on two of mine, I've just used all of the outside edges to create the main panel, and then I've used embossing folders to give me my pattern on the box. Um, it saves quite a bit of time because, you know, die cutting can take quite a while, especially when you've just got one of that design and you need to cut six of them, you know, or... Like, yeah, well, six of each, really. Um, it can take a little bit of time. So um, I'm going to show you that in my construction as well. But I'll move on to show you my examples that I've done. So this was the first one I ever made, which was two days ago. Um, and I went for a really steampunk look. I really love the way this came out, actually. It looks so cool. Um, and I've used the Nouveau Expanding Mousse on it, and I've also used the... Um, media dies as well. So I'll show you some of the bits and pieces. I'll, I'll show you in detail a bit more in a second. Um, so when the terrarium die came out on Hochanda, they were doing, because um, it was their birthday, they were giving away a freebie. Um, I can't remember which one came with the terrarium die, but um, if you got either of the uh, Your Bloomin' Marvelous or Hello Petal, They've got just a plain circle tag as their outside piece, and that's what I've used as the gift tags on um, on all of the ones I've made, actually. So that is what I've used to create that gift tag there. Then for this one, to create that really cool pattern on it that makes it look like um, sheet metal that's all bolted together, this 3D embossing folder from um, Tim Holtz. It hasn't got a name on it, though, so I'm not sure what it's actually called um, but it's one of these really really thick ones and I think how I got this to emboss using the tangerine um, I just put the card inside this and then just ran it through on top of the orange plate and it seemed to work fine so um, that's how I did that um, and then for all of the, the cog decoration I used the um, the media dies from Tonic the steam cogs and widgets and um, that cool chain I used as a, an element to make it look like the tag is hanging from that chain as well. And then the sentiment is one of the um, sentiment strip dies from Tonic. They've got seven different ones to choose from. Um, and I'll make sure to link everything below as well so you don't have to remember anything. You can just check out the description and it should have everything in there. Um, yeah, I'm kind of skipping backwards and forwards in this, but anyway. So that was the pro the products I used to make this one. And I used um, the Expanding Mousse in the Mustard Seed colour. So I embossed all of the pieces 
using the folder and this was the dark roast coffee foundations card um, and then I just came in and rubbed over some of the expanding mousse um, and in some places I used um, a stencil this is a woodware one I think it's just called cogs um, just to add a little bit on a couple of the sides and then obviously I heated that and puffed it up to give the really cool effect and again I added some of the mousse to some of these cogs to give them a little sort of rusty look and this one's got the copper penny just normal embellishment mousse on it as well um, and so inside this box I decided to make it a chocolate orange holder so we have a cute little chocolate orange which is all strapped inside if I move that properly then the little chains are supposed to keep it in place which is really cool so that's the little chocolate orange holder I'm going to show you at the end how to create how I created the insert for the chocolate orange to sit in because I had a had a request to do that um, and I've also done a different version which I'll show you in a minute too but um, you just need some hexagon dies and circle dies to create the inside piece and then obviously I've used the chains inside there to hold it in and I've just added a few extra cogs and things too um, and then it fits perfectly a chocolate orange if you do it this way um, it fits perfectly. I did add foam tape at the bottom to create a more of a solid bottom because it was quite loose in this one um, but in the other one um, I didn't use any foam tape so um, so that's that. Then the other chocolate orange holder I've done is this one. I did use um, the panels uh, from the die set for this one. The um, gorgeous geometric panel. I just cut it from gold mirror card all the way around and if you look closely you can see on that red card in the background there's some glitter this was um, the fire red glitter kiss so I just got some on the applicator and swiped it across the card after I um, die cut all the pieces just to give it a little bit of interest so it wasn't just plain card behind the patterned panel then um, if I show it all together, I use the matching panels to do the bottom and again I've done the same thing with a bit of glitter kiss in the background um, and then when you take it off, this one's chocolate orange sits up way more proudly um, and I reckon this design would work really well for an easter egg at Easter too so this is how this one's chocolate orange sits in and um, for these panels, instead of using any of the patterns because there isn't a geometric pattern for this part of the die set um, I decided to use the I think it's called simple stripes embossing folder from Tonic um, and so I just embossed them with a stripey pattern just to give it a different look and I also embossed the hexagonal piece that I did with a stripey pattern too um, and I did do an extra base as well just to make it look pretty on the inside too um, yeah and I'll, so I'll go through in a minute how I actually um, made all of these pieces. So that's that one with the chocolate orange sitting like that. Um, and then the lid goes on and then I've just done... Oh, that was... I don't know where that went now. There was um, another tag in there. Never mind. Um, I just... I, this was the a little birdie told me. So this is one that had sticky out parts on it. Um, but I just did the red card with the glitter kiss in the background and the gold mirror card and I've just put it on there for now. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to have that attached but it's just sitting on the, the top of it for now. And then, um, if you watched the shows on Hochanda, you probably saw uh, Jodie's creation. I think she'd done it a three-tiered one and then she'd put a bottle in it and said it needed to be an extra tier to make the bottle fit. Um, so I decided to create one because I thought this might go down well on my um, stall at Christmas too. So we've got an enormous terrarium now. Believe me, this takes quite a long time to make, um, and which is why I cheated and didn't use any of the die cut panels because you have to cut this piece this piece here you have to cut 21 times and I was like I am not cutting enough pieces to decorate that as well so um, yeah um, I, so I cheated for this one and I ended up using this is the uh, magazine freebie off of I think it's issue 166 of Papercraft Essentials where you get this really nice um, 
embossing folder and the Merry Christmas sentiment. So again I've done the same thing I was doing for the steampunk version and I um, embossed all the pieces with the folder but then for this one I used two different colours of the expanding mousse on this. I started out using the red leather um, and was quite heavy handed with that and then I took some of the Tuscan gold and I put it on a piece of cut and dry foam and then I tried to drag this lightly across to, to uh, like pick out the detail and not get too much in the background um, but I think that gives a really really nice rustic sort of traditional Christmas effect too and then to finish this one off um, around the edge of the bottom of this piece and around the dented in parts of the side of the box um, I just ran like a bead of glue around it and then tipped on some Nouveau Pure Sheen glitter and that one was light gold colour that I used and then <clears throat> then I've created um, a tag in the same way that I've done the rest of the box and I used one of the plain edged circle tags um, that they were giving away and I've used the Merry Christmas die from that magazine freebie as well then I've used a couple of um, the holly leaves from the terrarium die set and I've also added in um, the little fern, the orange slice, there's um, a pine cone and the scroll which are from, I can't remember the actual name, I haven't written it on my die set yet but it's that um, wreath die that they've brought out recently, Tonic brought out um, this for this Christmas um, so I'll link that below as well. Yeah so that's my look at all of the um, examples that I've created for, for these videos um, let me know if you find these useful and interesting as well I know I haven't shown you the construction yet but um, I'm hoping on, on doing this for um, a lot of the dimensions range from Tonic all the ones that I've got um, and I thought it would be nice to include um, a few samples so I've kind of got to wait until I've made a few boxes before I can film the video um, but I'm hoping that you'll enjoy this, so I'll see you in a second for the construction. Hello, so here's the um, construction for the Tonic Terrarium gift box die set. Um, I'm going to show a couple of variations along the way as well, and I'm actually making one that is a proper finished one rather than just showing you um, the basic construction but I'll skip out all the steps um, in between so I don't confuse you with the construction of it um, you know because I'm decorating it as well but so to create the basic construction of the terrarium box as it's supposed to be made you need two of these ones you need one of this enormous one and you need three of these ones so this makes the generic terrarium box which is depicted on the front of the packaging. If you wanted to make this into a chocolate orange holder, which is what I'm actually going to show you, um, and if you wanted it to be a chocolate orange holder that looks like this, which I'm making a silver version of, where the um, this part is recessed down into the bottom of the box, then you will also need two pieces that look like this. So you need um, a set of hexagon and circle dies. So this hexagon um, measures, I'll do it in centimetres, measures just over seven and a half centimetres or just over eight and a half, no nearly, nearly nine centimetres from point to point one roughly that size. This is going to be the base inside the box. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly that size because we're going to use foam tape to raise it up a bit so it sort of sits at about a centimetre up from the bottom of the box inside. Um, and then this piece that you need is um, a hexagon that is 10 centimetres or from point to point it's about 11 and a half centimetres and you want to use a 7 centimetre diameter circle to cut out this space which is where the chocolate orange will sit inside. Um, so that's what you need if you want to make a chocolate orange. So you need the basic things that I just said and then to make a chocolate orange holder that looks like this with this um, mechanism inside for it to sit in you need what I just said 
but if you wanted um, a chocolate orange holder that looks like this, then you will need um, this combination. This hexagon is, so you want to find a hexagon that is the same size as the base of the box, just so you can make an extra piece to put inside there just to finish it off. You don't need to have that though. And then this hexagon needs to be from oh from cross across to cross it's um just over eight centimeter eight and a half centimeters and from point to point it's ten centimeters and so this you're going to create score lines around it so it needs to be just a smidgen bigger than the actual top of the box and that's how you create that and the circle hole to cut is six centimeters so you want a six centimeter diameter circle and then a hexagon that's slightly bigger than the top of the assembled box and one of the base um, and that creates the chocolate orange holder that looks like that where you've got nothing supporting the bottom of the chocolate orange it's sort of floating um, that proud out of the box so So in this video I'm going to show you the basic construction but with the added chocolate orange holder but if you don't want that you just don't put it in and you follow the same instructions. Um, I am also thought I would just quickly show if you don't want to um, die cut all of the pretty panels for the sides of the boxes like this because that can take some time and you may be wanting to make one reasonably quickly and or you're not in the mood for a lot of die cutting. Um, you can use embossing folders to pattern your pieces. Um, but I thought I would show you how you can get them to cover the whole thing. Like for this one, I'm using, um, I think this is like a A2 sized one, um, and obviously the whole thing doesn't fit in that. If you use a 6x6 one, it's pretty much perfect. Um, but if you have smaller ones but you still want to use them, this is how you can get the perfect um, embossing on them. So I'm not sure if this is the um, suggested method for using these folders, but um, because I'm using the tangerine and this is a Sizzix folder, um, I've just I find that it works because it's one of these really really thick ones. It works just running it through on your orange cutting mat. So first of all, we want to um, line up. So we've got the first triangle. We want to line up that with the side of where the folder ends. So if we line that up against that score line, then this part's sticking out, but that, well, actually if we move it down a little bit, it's it's all within it then. So we want to, oh, let's zoom out a bit. So we want to emboss it like that first, and run that through. Then, when we've got that half embossed, um, we want to line this score line up with this side of the embossing folder, and whoops, and then run that one through like that, and that covers the entire piece. Then, so I just thought I would give you that tip as well for how to get an embossing folder to cover the whole um, section want this to be a finished box um, in the end rather than just putting together one to show you the construction I'm going to now um, add my uh, mousses and stuff to it I, there will be an arty potential video showing you um, the full process behind this one so um, you can watch that to find out exactly how I do it but just to make this video a bit more concise and more of just the construction um, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, so I'll be back in one second. So I've got my embellishment on all of my pieces now. All I did was add some grey matter Nouveau expanding mousse, just my finger all over it, and then I did do a little bit of stenciling and puffed up that as well. Um, I did want to say too, um, you can get this entire box out of two sheets of A4, even if you're making the um, chocolate orange insert too. All of this was two pieces, so it's probably like more like one and a half pieces um, if you don't do the chocolate orange holder as well. So it's a really um, like economical box, and you get a really sturdy result at the end as well. So um, 
we've got all of our pieces. I'll leave these out of the way just for now. Um, so these, these are. This is everything we need. Um, and now we need to put the tape on. So um, you can use um, six millimeter red liner tape, but these ones. Um, this one down the side of the cone and the small ones on the base are quite narrow so I'm using 3mm um, tape and you want to use red line tape because it's nice and strong I got this on Amazon so I'll try and remember to link it down below it was really really reasonable it had like 50 meters on it so you know it's going to last for a lot of boxes so you want to run the tape down the glue tabs on both of the um, half cone pieces and then you want to add it to the bottom parts of each of the three sections here as well as the little side tabs because that's what holds all three of them together to create the hexagonal piece I'll try and do this quickly for you so that it doesn't take up too much of your time use wet glue for these as well it just depends what you prefer really but um I don't mind that it grabs really quickly I prefer that rather than having to sit there and hold it for a while because um you know sometimes it shifts and then it's not in the right place and then it just gets annoying and then on this one you want to just add your tape to this little section I'll show you these up close in a second that's all our tape so we've added it just oh you can see it quite well actually because it's red tape just onto those little tabs on this one on these three places on each three of these and on that long side on the cone as well so I'll show you the cone first it's really simple to assemble you just want to pull the tape off one um, if I zoom in a tinsy bit line them up corner to corner down here hold that in place and then go along the line and line them up and then press it down firmly then um, you want to go in and uh, reinforce all the score lines you might think you would lose these because you've um, uh, embossed it all but actually they stayed pretty well I, I didn't find that I like couldn't work out where the score lines were um, after embossing so um, yeah and I don't, I don't think it interferes too much might be a different matter if you were die cutting straight into these side panels you might want to um, go down all the score lines with your scoreboard just to double check that they were all um, in the right places and everything and then you want to score the one where the glue tab is as well so you've now got your um, all your fold lines reinforced on this um, and because this is six sided you can fold it in half to get the perfect alignment um, for putting this together so if we fold that one down take that tape off line it up at the top of the cone this time just pushing the pieces together so they line up nicely and then press and voila really really easy to put the cone together you probably noticed some of my bits of expanding mousse just popped off but that does happen if you go round the corner I quite like the look of the going round the corner bit but it does occasionally pop off when you do that but anyway that is our top cone piece then to assemble the bottom of the box you, it's this piece um, you want to reinforce all of these score lines so all the ones that are around the bottom hexagon and all of these glue tab ones as well I like to go around and do all of these first, like this. Then the the way I like to do it, you might find um, a slightly different way that you prefer to do it. You might not want to take all the glue tabs off at once. I just I do because it's easier. So and then unfold all of them, lay it down flat, 
then I pick off the red liner tape for all of the pieces of tape and then we just simply go around you put the glue tab behind that panel make sure the top pieces are lining up nicely and then just press it into place so it's really really easy just keep going around for all six of them and there we have it so that's the bottom of our box now if you're just doing the normal one um, just ignore this next bit I'm telling you so the normal one you can just do that um, if you want to do the chocolate orange hold oh gosh I'm feeling stuff everywhere if you want to do the chocolate orange holder that looks like this you can put the um, hexagon piece that's exactly the same size just to make the bottom look pretty if you want to you don't have to and if you want to make the chocolate orange box that I'm showing you how to make now um, I'll show you in this one where it is we're going to put that piece in down there um, and we're going to use foam tape to do that so it's raised up a bit inside the box so the chocolate orange doesn't sit so far down okay so to do that um, I'm using this foam tape anything that's about a millimetre thick really um, and to begin with I folded it in half this is how I did my original one so I'm just going to show you the exactly the same way um, I folded it in half and got about how many centimetres is that? that's about 11 centimetres folded in half right then I took this is maybe 8 centimetres and I made it triple thickness so just sticking them all on top of each other you can use whatever foam tape or foam pads you've got it doesn't have to be anything special and then I just chopped a long piece this is the double one that I just did I'm going to put one piece like that and then I think we'll put a thicker piece you're just basically trying to fill up the base a bit so that the chocolate orange has got um, somewhere to be supported by so it just so happened this was how I did it in the beginning so I thought I'd just show you this way so that's double thickness down and then we're going to use the triple thickness one and for this I cut the long strip again and I put it the other way in the bottom and then I just did a supporting piece on either side as well we just want something to raise the bottom up. You could, um, I don't know, you could put scraps of card or something in there if you wanted to. You don't have to use foam tape. And then you just take this piece that we have coloured as well and just stick that in. It just makes it look pretty through the, the hole and it just raises the bottom up slightly. I mean, looking from the side, we're probably, the bottom's now here rather than at the bottom. So that's that. Then we need the next part which is this bit here so for this we want to uh, take off this tape and place them all together so we have all three pieces in one go and all you do for this is you're just lining up with the score line um, to get them to be in the right place then we want to go round and fold all of the six sections like Ooh. and we want to fold that glue tab that's there and we want to fold these ones in as well so that they're pre-folded it's easier to do it at this stage okay so once we've got everything pre-folded we then want to um, stick this together to create our hexagon section so we're just going to take the tape off of that and then you literally just line up the score line there we go so that's that so that's now our top piece here um, if you're making the normal box um, this will just stick straight onto here just as it is um, and obviously I will show you that in a second but for the people who want to make the chocolate orange holder you're now going to move on to this piece and you need a scoreboard and a scoring tool and you just want to line up the edge of the hexagon with your scoreboard and score at five millimeters or half centimeter 
just the same, whoops, that was in the wrong place, just the same all the, whoa, do I make a mess of this, all the way around the edge, just one little score line all the way around the edge. This is what we're going to use to glue it inside so that it stays there nice and securely. And if you were going to make the other version um, where it's higher up, you're, do, you're going to do the exactly the same thing but with your smaller hexagon size. Um, so it is exactly the same process but you're just using a smaller hexagon for the other one. Then I want to reinforce um, the score lines we just made. Then you will notice on each of these corners, you might, yeah, you can just about see it, where we've the fold lines have over, like intersected, you've got a little diamond. So now you want to chop out all those little diamonds. This just makes it much um, neater and easier to glue it all in in a second. So we've now got this piece, so we've got those little glue tabs all the way around the edge that are five millimetres in from our, the edge of our die cut. Then we want to add our tape to these. Again, I'm using that three mil one because it fits perfectly on a five mil tab with a little bit of space around it. And for this, I am going to use wet glue as well. Because we're going to place this up inside the other piece we just made, um, I want to be able to manoeuvre it in, like if it does start to stick in the wrong place. So I'm going to um, peel off the backing for all of these pieces. Then use some glue and add that to the glue tabs as well, just on top of the tape. Um, this just helps you still be able to move it around because this glue's wet before the um, the red liner tape catches. If that makes any sense, I think it does. Okay, that's that. Then we want to carefully sort of fold these tabs just in backwards a little bit, just to make it easier to get this inside. So just carefully fold them backwards so it looks more like the, the smaller hexagon shape now. Then you want to take this piece that we just did and then turn this upside down and put it inside. And then you're just going to push that up as far as it goes because it will stop at a certain point when the sloping hexagon becomes the same size as the small hexagon we just made from doing the score lines. And then you just push it into place. And there you have, it's just stuck in there. And there you've got that little recess that kind of makes it look even more um, steampunky and mechanically. But if you wanted this version, because we, for this one, you would use a smaller um, hexagon, it would push right up to the top of the box and then just stick on. But it's exactly the same process. Then finally, if you're making the simple box, you need to listen to this part again. Um, Finally, we want to get this inside to finish off the bottom of the box. So, I like to do it um, <clears throat> three glue tabs at a time. So, I'm going to take off the tape on three of them. You might want to do it only two at a time um, if, you're, if this is the first time you've made it or something. But I, I've done it three at a time. And then, so you just want to place this on, line up that first one where you've already taken, so the first one that you've taken the tape off of. And then just press it in place. Once it's in the right place, you just press it in place. And then move on to the next one you've already taken the tape off of. And the third one. And then just press them into place. And then just remove the backing off of these ones. If you wonder why I use scissors, it's because um, 
I bite my nails so I can't pick the backing off and also um, this stuff's really staticky but if you pick it off with scissors it doesn't really stick to you too much. Um, and these ones are great for it, the little mini snips too. So then we just want to stick the last three on. All I'm doing is lining it up and then pushing from the inside um, to get the tab to stick to the other part of the box. And there we have it. There's the bottom of our box completely finished. We did the top earlier and that's perfect like that too. And it fits on absolutely perfectly. And then all you've got to do now is um, decorate it. And um, I'm not going to show you the decoration but I'm, um, yeah, I won't show you the actual decorating but I'll probably put a photo of it at the end. Um, and anyway, I'm going to make it look exactly like this one. It's just a silver version. But um, if you're curious about how I got the chains to work inside, um, I've already die cut them. And the, oh yeah, the great thing about using the media dies to cut all of the cogs and chains and things, um, because they're designed to cut thicker materials, you can cut multiples at once. So for this design, I needed three chains because I'm using two inside and I'm using one on the outside um, to hold the tag onto. Um, you can cut all three of them at once, so that's really helpful too. And so, um, to do the inside piece and get the chains to look like this, they do tuck under as well. They just tuck in so it looks like it's properly being held in place. I just used some glue, and then I just took the last chain piece and just stuck it just there. And then the last chain section of another piece and stuck it just there. And then that's as simple as it is. And then once the chocolate orange is in, oops, when, once the glue has dried and you put the chocolate orange in, those can just um, bow upwards and tuck under the other side and that's how you can keep it inside. So that is how to make... That's the basic construction of the terrarium box plus showing you how you can make it into a chocolate orange holder um, and two different designs of that. Um, I also just wanted to mention, if you're watching the shows on Hochanda, you probably saw um, Jodie's wine bottle holder that she did. So to create this, you are going to need one of the big bottom pieces, two of the cone piece, just like for a regular box, but the smaller pieces, this one, that we used, we used three for the, the original size box, but to create this one, you need 21 of these. And then, so this is the, the basic part of the normal box, but when you get onto this piece, this is then this piece rather than a bottom piece, um, and you're just putting it up the other way. And to get this to join together, I was just cutting... Um, have I got another scrap of card? So... I was just cutting a piece of card like this, about this wide, and then I was holding this up against one of these pieces, because we know it's going to be this side that the hinge is going to be for, so then I was cutting a straight edge against there, holding that up, and then cutting a straight edge against there, so it's roughly the same length. Then I was taking um, a piece of double-sided tape, just like that, and then folding this in half. I was using a scoreboard, but I've got too much stuff on my desk to bring it back up again. So I was folding it like that, and so then this piece, you're then going to have um, one of these, well, it's one of those up ways, and it's just holding it on then. I think that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very good at explaining stuff. But So say this is the bottom of this box, and we want to put the next level on if we were making the red, the tall red one. It would be you'd be using this piece, but you'd be using this side of the box. So you'd have your next pieces like this, and you'd be using that to secure it. Um, this is I did film. Um, I did film this one, so it's going to be an RT potential video. I know there's no talking in them, and it's just sped up, but you will be able to see the process, especially because I have to repeat that three times to get all of the the height to it. So, um, yeah, that hopefully that will be up relatively soon as well. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this, well, construct, yeah, this construction of the box, showing you the, um, 
the regular terrarium box and then how to turn it into a chocolate orange holder as well and also how to convert it into a really tall um, version too. So thank you for watching and if you find this useful um, can you let me know below because I'm, I'm hoping to do this for a lot of the other tonic die sets but I want to make sure that they're definitely useful before I start spending hours making loads of videos so thank you for watching, bye!